Two bams. Two bams. Two bam. Two bam. Two bam. Two bams. Tubes. Two bomb. Two bam. Two bam. Two bam to fire tubes. Two amplifier. Two bamps. Two bamps. Two bamps. Two bamps. Two bamps. Two bam. Tube amplifier. Amplifier. Two bam. Two bump. Two amplifier. Two amp. Two bam. Two bamp. Two bam. Two bamps. Two bam. Two amplifier. Two amplifier. Tubes. Since the inception of the electric guitar, the instrument has been naturally intertwined and associated with tube amplifiers and their analog non-linear response. From totally clean and sparkly and beautiful to completely saturated and wild and everything in between. These amplifiers essentially amplify the musical voices of the players and allow them to be unique and more expressive. They are the tools that allow us to be heard and they give us the opportunity to have our art stand tall and proud. Some people think that the art of these, what I like to call magical devices, is dying. But I and many others like to think that tube amps will be with us for a long time and that the so-called war between analog and digital isn't lost. But is there even a war? And can't both worlds just live together in harmony? I'm a user of digital modeling devices and guitar amp plugins myself. They sound great, they have great functionality, and they definitely have their place in the current modern world of guitar processing and amplification. And I think it's great that there now are so many ways for us players to express ourselves. Whether you only play in your bedroom with your headphones on for yourself, or on the biggest stages for thousands of people, there are tools out there for everyone. Digital modeling devices these days can hold hundreds of amp sounds and effects with high quality in packages as small as a lunchbox or even a stomp box. However, I think there is something to be said for experiencing the sound, feel, workflow, beauty and elegance of an actual physical analog tube amplifier. That's why I often say to other players that I think it's good to at least own one tube amplifier. This will give you as a player a direct connection with the origins of the electric guitar and excitement that has always been an integral part of it. It will give you a baseline of what a real tube amplifier actually sounds like and how it behaves. And I believe eventually your digital sounds will be better off because of it. It's also worth noting that by getting a tube amp, whether it's big, small, fancy or cheap, you get to support the industry that has brought us these magical machines for all these years. And by sustaining this industry that is driven by creativity, we will hopefully also have more amps to model in the future. Because without actual physical amps to model, what would happen to the modelers? Consider this video a love letter to the analog guitar tube amplifier, and let's go on a little journey about why we love them so much and why we think it might be a good idea to own at least one tube amplifier. I've said what I wanted to say, although I could go on for longer, but I've also asked some friends and people from the industry to talk a little bit about why they love tube amps and why they also think it's a good idea to own at least one. I hope you enjoy this, and I think you'll find all of their different perspectives on this subject to be interesting and hopefully entertaining as well. I think the best analogy that I have for why tube amps are important is the vinyl resurgence of the 2000s. All of a sudden, the younger generation realized analog music sounds better than the digital compact discs that we've been listening to. We shouldn't wait that long this time. Everyone should just realize right now that digital amps don't sound as good as tube amps. They don't. They don't sound as present. If I go to a concert and I see people playing Kempers, Fractals, I kind of bored at the tone usually. It's very sterile. So just go ahead and head that off at the pass and just get a tube amp so that your recordings sound good, right? <laughs> Many years.
years ago, I read a Dimebag Daryl interview, and he said when he's feeling down, he cranks up his amps and just plays a big open G and just soaks it in. And he feels better after that. No matter how you feel about your playing or what's going on, like, you can rip an open G and it just feels amazing. And you kind of need a tube amp for that. I love modelers and I use software all the time, but there's no replacing even a 20 watt amp going through four speakers with all of this wood and mass and just pushing air. And it just fills the room and the, the sonic space around you. It's just like a cleansing sonic bath. You know that, you know what I mean? This. Tube amps. Why every guitar player, nay, every human being should own at least one tube amplifier? I'm so glad you asked because there are so many reasons. For one, have you looked at these things? Have you seen how pretty they are? They've got these knobbies here, switches, sometimes buttons like this one here, and those nice glowy things on the inside. And they sound fantastic too. But that's not all they're good for. There are so many use cases for tube amps, such as workout accessories, space heaters, substitute for a personality, for the most part, it's an emotional thing for me that involves all the senses. First and foremost, of course, the sound of the amplifiers, but also the sounds they make when you turn them off and you can hear them cooling down and they make these crackles and pops. Also, the tactile feedback you get when dialing in your own sound, the way the amp responds, the, the heat you can feel coming off the tube amp, the way you can see the tubes glow inside or the smell of hot glass or the taste you get in your mouth when a filter capacitor explodes right in your face. Okay, that's not great, but tube amps can feel like they're alive, there's life in them, and with that comes a certain element of chaos. And being able to control that chaos is an important skill to carry over into the digital world. Now, don't get me wrong, digital rigs are great. I use them all the time, and the guitar world is a better place for them. But they don't have this chaos factor so much. I mean, you can use digital noise gates that are much faster and more accurate than analog noise gates can be. But ask any recording engineer with more than three functional brain cells and he'll tell you that it's best to get it right at the source. And an analog rig can teach you how to control the chaos. Playing a tube amp, preferably with a real speaker, will teach you a lot about how to hold the guitar to reduce noise, where to stand, how to position yourself. It's an important skill that will carry over into the digital world. And lastly, have you ever looked up how vacuum tubes or thermionic valves as they are referred to correctly actually work? It's the wildest functional principle and these amps might as well be working off magic. It's fascinating. Go check it out. Buy a tube amp. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, John here. I am currently in beautiful Dublin prepping for a European tour with Mammoth. But I wanted to chime in uh, my thoughts real quick on tube amps. So I feel it's really important for players to spend some time with the tube amplifier and kind of understand where everything we have now technology wise whether it be modelers profilers plugins where it all kind of comes from all those things are just emulating a real amplifier at the end of the day and not just a real amplifier but a real amplifier with a signal chain of pedals cabinets mics all that so what's cool is whenever you have an actual tube amp you have to start with that and build off of that rather than just change a preset. And I think that's very important because you really get to understand your rig at that point. You really get to understand what it is you like or don't like, and that's huge. Um, other than that, the other things that come to mind are things like latency. Latency is a an unavoidable thing in a digital environment. And with a real tube amp, you don't run into that. You get quickness with your attack and your right hand, your picking hand, you're gonna feel it. If you AB a real tube amp to a a plug-in or a profile of that tube amp, it might sound the same in the mix, but feel-wise, it's gonna be much different. And I think that's important. Um, outside of that, it's just a, a thing that you grow with. If you decide that, hey, this amp doesn't sound how I want it to sound, or how it sounds in my head, then you pick up boost pedal, you change an element, you change a speaker, you change a tube, and you work that way. And what you end up with is your own sound, rather than a preset that somebody put together for you. So. Tons of reasons to really dive into the tube amp world, but I, you know, those are the two that come to mind. So yeah, anyway, get your tube amp, enjoy it, turn it up a lot. See you guys on tour. So I was thinking back and the first tube amp that I ever played through, 
I had uh, like a 70s JMP combo um, when I was like 14 years old. And honestly, I didn't love it. I, uh, it didn't have enough gain for me. Um, it didn't, it felt stiff and uninspiring. And I mean, I was a shit player at the time. I was just learning how to play. And honestly, I didn't get back into tube amps until I think around 1999. I'm in my 40s now, so I'm old. And, uh, you know, I started playing rectifiers. And I remember the first time I plugged into a rectifier, I, I mean, it had everything I wanted. I was a hard rock player. And I mean, the low end thump of the rectifier, I was sold instantly. It was kind of like, as hard as I dug in, it just barked right back at me, which I had never experienced that. And, you know, to me, I think everybody needs to have at least one tube amp in their collection. I, I've become kind of a tube amp nut. Um, I just love the natural compression that you get from tubes. And I just think that the dynamics that you get out of a tube amp are unrivaled. I mean, if I, if I let up a little bit, it's going to clean right up on almost every amp I have, even the really high gain stuff. And, you know, the harder I dig in, the more that it wants to bark back at you. And, you know, while I think we do live in kind of the golden age of gear right now, I mean, the modeling options, the, you know, solid state options and like transistor options from pedals. I, I mean, it's nothing like what I had growing up. It's all amazing, but there is still nothing in this world that feels like a great tube amp and you need to have one. My content is largely around comparing modelers, so stuff like the Quad Cortex or the HX Stomp. But even as a modeler guy, I actually feel like at some point in every guitarist's journey, it would be very much worth it to own at least one tube amplifier. My first tube amp was this Marshall DSL-20, and even compared to like the higher end modelers, there's just a response that you get from something like this when you really dig into the strings that you're just not gonna get from a modeler. And unlike the modeler and plugin world where people mostly start with presets and then go from there, when you have one of these, you're gonna end up having to dial it in yourself to get the tones that you want out of it. Because once you understand what these potentiometers are doing to your tone, uh, how they're affecting the preamp, how they're affecting the power amp, uh, all this knowledge can be just taken back to your modelers. And that's why I think it's worth keeping one of these around as a reference, because that knowledge can only serve to improve how you sound, uh, no matter if you're plugging into a digital unit or a analog unit. Ever since the 30s, when the electric guitar first came to be, there was a guitar amp with it. These two things together, in my opinion, form the instrument. If you're talking about electric guitar, you have to talk about an amplifier as well. Those two things always together, always connected. And it's the pairing that created all of that fantastic music and tones that I love, and I'm sure you do as well. All the digital stuff that you can get today, I've owned it all. I love it, right? It's super convenient and it has its place, but it is not the same as a cranked tube amp. There's a whole generation of players that are now coming through that have never played a loud tube guitar amp and had that feeling and that feedback that comes from that experience that, in my opinion, cannot actually be replicated by a modeler. It's not the same. And as a result, I believe that a lot of the music that these guys are creating, as technically brilliant as it is, it just misses dynamics. And I think that dynamics would be restored if they had to control and had the experience of wrestling with and taming an amazing, loud tube amp. If you're not playing with a great tube amp, you're only playing with half the instrument. Do yourself a favor. If you don't have a tube amp, go and get yourself one. So what is there not to love about tube amps? I mean, how many things in our life today in this crazy technological world can we say we're still using the same technology from the 50s, the 60s, uh, some cases even earlier? I mean, literally nothing in the world uses tubes except for guitar amplifiers, it seems like. And what makes them unique and what makes them special, why anybody, any guitar player should still try one or at least own one, is that there's a level of unpredictability. There's uh, a liveliness. There's something about these that is actually alive. There's inconsistencies. There's these little nuances that make them special. There's not many modern gear nowadays that says that you could say, I have a good one. Or when you're selling a piece of gear or buying a piece of gear that you say, oh, it's a good one. Normally it's just, they all sound the same. 
But with tube amps, I can take four examples of this 96 matchless DC 30 that I converted into a head and they'll all sound different or Soldano SLO 30. You'll try them all and they might all sound different. 63 basement. This will sound like here. It sounds one way in another room. It'll sound another way. And that's just the beauty of it. My sir SL 67. This is going to sound different than the next sir SL 67 because the tubes are just alive. There's just a feel, there's a thing, there's a vibe. And probably the coolest part about it is that it's intangible. There's no real way to measure or to put a number to or to quantify. It's just a thing. There's just that tube amp thing that is just unlike anything else. And me being primarily a digital amp modeling user, I still feel it. I still have all of these because there's just something about tubes that I can't describe, but I love Hi there, I'm Thomas Blug. I designed modeling amps. I designed all tube amps. I don't design transistor amps and I do my own thing with Blue Guitar now. And I think tube amps are still relevant today because this is the origin. It's an experience, it's a puristic experience to play a tube amp. If you have something that is moving air in the way that a pure tube amp does, um, it is an experience. It's so, just like playing an acoustic drum kit versus an electric drum kit. And it's a feel thing. Maybe the audience doesn't notice any difference, but it does something to you, the player. Also, the puristic approach makes you work on your tone even more. So you have to focus on the dynamic. And if you just have one sound, maybe your favorite go-to sound, it's great to have that amp also as a traditional old tube amp. So you understand the roots and you can investigate all the little nuances that you can find in that tone that you might use in your modeler um, with more convenience and effects and stuff like that. On the other hand, if you have a modeler, sometimes you have too many choices. You have too many tones or too many effects masking the real deal um, yeah, the beauty of the of the tone. And there is something about the reduction of a pure tube amp that you only discover if you work the tone with that amp. So, yeah, I think it's an experience, a feel experience for the player that you should have um, with a real tube amp. And then you can still decide whatever you use for your convenience in the situation. But I had a three-piece band specially formed to play my Marshall's non-master volume to get that Jimi Hendrix and old-school rock experience. And I tell you, it's a big, big difference when you're coming from something that is easy to play, like a modern amp. If I went back for that, that changed my playing style so much and it actually improved my tone from the fingers because I had to fight, I had to work and I found the beauty in that. So that's my little advice. Cheers. Amps are so heavy and they're so loud. Now, no offense, but when did guitar players become such f***ing wimps? Last I checked, rock and roll was about rebellion and not convenience. I mean, some stages these days are so clean and pristine, it's like a doctor's office. The relationship between a guitar player, a guitar, and an amplifier is unmatched with any technology out there. And I'm not knocking modeling because I have some great modelers here in my studio and I love using them. To me, a tone is not a tone until you created it yourself. A tone on a modeler is a preset and it's an algorithm. Now, for example, this little guy right here. For under $200, you can experience the joy of 63 tube amplifiers. Yes, 63 amps, all for under $200. Now, you know who said that? A marketing department said that to convince you that your 200 bucks is going to give you the joy of playing through a real tube amp. Now, I appreciate that a device like this is going to introduce guitar to more people, and I think that's a great thing. But if you're serious about being a guitar player, that relationship between you as a player, the guitar, and an amplifier is so critical in finding your own voice. And owning an amplifier, it's like pride of ownership. The craftsmanship that goes into a great amp, it's just a wonderful thing to own. And the people that are developing these amplifiers are literally bleeding and shocking themselves 
searching for the next great circuit. I mean, some of the greatest guitar players in history, the Eddie Van Halen's Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix, we love their songs, we love their sounds, and we salivated over the gear they used to achieve those sounds. We all know what Eddie Van Halen brought to the table in terms of his two hands, but the legend of his old Marshall and the Variac and the Brown sound is as much a part of the legend as the player himself. That relationship between a guitar a guitar player and an amplifier is unmatched by any digital technology. And if you're serious about guitar playing, you really need to understand that relationship. And I think it's critical for you to own at least one tube amp. And I'm convinced if you do own one, it won't be your last. Um, I grew up in a small town in the early 2000s, so I didn't really have a lot of access to tube amps. Um, but I still remember the first time that I went to the big city and plugged into a dual rectifier and my mind was just blown. I know you can call it science, but it feels like magic whenever you plug in and everything is just right. And that happens every time you plug into a tube amp. Um, these days I use a lot of modelers. It's just easier for my workflow. And although they sound great, it just doesn't have that same sort of tangible quality. And I do think that everybody should have even a small practice tube amp at home because the inspiration that it gives you, the the way that it makes music pour out of you, it's it's unparalleled. I I will never give up having tubes. Why should you use a tube amp? <laughs> well, or well, why should you at least have one? Well, here's the thing: uh, fun, inconvenient, too loud, fun. So, I just got a quad cortex. And preset one alone is almost everything you ever need to record most albums, honestly. You'd be okay with that. Um, UA Lion, Little Box, sounds massively phenomenal and it's all the marshals you ever need. So why do you need a tube amp? Well, these emulate sounds from a recorded amp and cap combination going into your monitor speakers or your DAW or your headphones. So it's a recorded amp and that's amazing. But what did the recorded amp actually sound like before it was recorded? Because that's all they do. And if you take them and put them in a monitor speaker, which I have, or in FRFIF, uh, as people call it, uh, falsely because it's just a monitor speaker. Um, you know what? Those will not sound like a tube amp. Not even like a small tube amp. A tube amp in a cab in a room is an experience that if you haven't had it, you should have it. I had a guy who had like three Aristides guitars and all this really high end shit and plays modern metal and comes in here and he's never played a tube amp. It always helix, helix, helix. And I put him into a Friedman and his jaw dropped and he's like, oh, that, 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 that's what it's supposed to be like. You have no point of reference if you are only playing modelers the, or software, which is great. When it's about recording, this is where you should be. Absolutely. It is convenient. It sounds really good. Almost indistinguishable from the real thing. But a lot of the music you grew up with was performed with real amps cranking in a room, interacting with the guitar, blowing up your ears and everyone around it, rattling the drum kit, feedbacking. And you know what? That led to the riffs we know now as the music we love. I dare to say if we did it at a, you know, civil volume, like I do. I mean, I'm guilty of this as well. I, I never actually play through the real cap in the room. It's too loud for me. But that's why I wouldn't have created Led Zeppelin. Those sounds that you do with a full tube amp in a cap in a room, not a model into a monitor speaker, they are what made music what it is. And I think we're probably losing something um, not doing that. All you guys on Instagram noodling amazingly technically and all the speed and the shredding and all that. Maybe it's because you're not in a room with a tube amp where a big open A is all you need to be happy. Maybe it's all the software and the modeling that makes us want to play faster and 
fill the space with all the notes and the tappies and the shreddies. When the sound's there, maybe you don't even need that. And maybe that's why that's the you know, situation we're in. I don't know. But I know that music was created with the tube amp in the room. And I think losing that would mean losing some of the great inspiration for music. Again, I'm just as guilty. It's just my two thoughts. Uh, my two thoughts, my two cents. If you have a way to actually play it in an amp in a room and have at least one, you should. You should know what it feels like so that you know what is emulated in the emulations. Thanks, John. In my personal opinion, tube amps have a specific feel and dynamics to them you just cannot replicate with digital. Um, even the best stuff out in the market right now, there's this reactiveness that's just not there when it comes to how you play through it and how it feels while you're playing through it. Real amplifiers just have this magical effect that when you're chugging through it or playing through it, that it just reacts with your playing in a way that you really can't replicate with anything else. So me being you know, a tone connoisseur like I am, I own so many amplifiers because all of them have a special feel to them. All of them react differently depending on what guitars I'm putting through it, you know, what picks I'm using, pickups, tunings, all that jazz. But I definitely implore anybody who takes guitar seriously and really wants to really feel their, their playing, feel the sound that they're going for, even if you're using a load box. A tube amplifier just like it has this special place that can't be replicated by anything else in the world and i would never not want to have a tube amp even if i had to sell all of my amps today i would have at least one of them around just because they're so much fun to play through when you feel that like low end reacting under your hands as you're playing through it's one of those things you just can't get from anything else and that's why i think everybody should own at least one amp that has tubes in it in their life I think everyone should own at least one tube amp because there's an experience that comes with a tube amp that you can't get with a solid state amplifier or a plug-in or modeling, no matter how good those things have gotten, and they have gotten very good. There's just something about the perfect imperfectness of a tube circuit. It's inconsistent, it's kind of messy, it's difficult to capture, and sometimes it can be a little frustrating, but that's kind of an analogy for life and how it goes when you play with other musicians. To me, a tube amplifier is kind of like playing with other musicians. It's not always a perfect ebb and flow, and part of the magic comes from the way that you interact with that imperfectness. And so I think that is why everyone should own a tube amplifier. Why do I love tube amps? That's a simple, simple answer. But let me tell you in the words of one of the greatest writers of our times, Dickens. In fact, I have his words right here. Let me read them to you. You see, what you have is a trapped, gaseous entity, adrift in the emptiness of a contained vacuum, bottled up, silently waiting, as if in a coma, for its master, you, to throw that life-giving switch that quickly warms the base of its transparent cell. Exciting the vaporized organism into a dancing frenzy of compressed electrons bathed in the neon glow of a swirling blue and amber cloud. You see, that is the invitation of this smoldering body, as it's ready for its life giver to begin the thrusting of waves of signals from your fiery fingers as they cross the path of vibrations from the strings of our universe. That is profound because you see what you have is power, power that cannot be wielded with ones and zeros, much less a crystal lattice. Hey, so with the question of what makes two amps so special aside from the obvious that they look super cool. I'm sure in this video there's going to be a ton of different reasons. With tube amps, for me, the biggest thing is the interaction between 
boosts pedals and amps. I really enjoy the fact that I can have basically one amp and a bunch of pedals and almost have a bunch of different amps just in that alone. Whether I take this pedal or this pedal, I'm going to get a pretty different sound. And that's really handy when doing reamping for bands or trying to find a new and different sound, which I'm pretty sure all of us are. So for me, at least having one amp on hand with maybe a couple of pedals is a big step up for what I do and what I need. But that's just my two cents. Uh, yep. Hello, everybody, one and all. My name is Robert Jackson, and I would like to thank my good friend John Simons for inviting me onto his channel to talk to you today about tube amps. If you don't know who I am, I also happen to have a YouTube channel called Robert Jackson that is all about guitars and guitar gear and uh, channels very, very similar to this one. I have also worked in the MI industry for the last uh, over 15 years now. And over the course of my MI career, I have played and bought and sold an absolute boatload of amplifiers. And by boatloads, I'm talking cargo ships, right? I'm fortunate enough that I've gotten to experience a lot of amps in some capacity or another. Now, I'm quite sure that we have all met this guy before. Now, listen. Them tube amps is always going to be way, way more gooder than any of them cheap solid-state contraptions. They just is. Ain't no two ways about it. And in all seriousness, if you are familiar with my channel, if you've watched, I've talked about this on my channel many, many times, I have nothing against solid-state amps whatsoever. There are a lot of great solid-state amps out there. The Quilter stuff, Randall's put out a number of them over the years. The Roland JC120 is regarded by many to be the greatest clean signal on the planet. And that includes both guys in Metallica, by the way. I'm not a solid-state amp hater at all. I happen to like solid-state amps. But at the end of the day, I'm a tube guy. 98% of the amps that I own are tube amps. There's a whole rack of tube amps here. There's a tube amp under the desk there. There's a couple more tube amps there. A couple more Randall tube amps there. And of course, last but not least, this here is a rack mount studio tube amp that I use to perform 90% of my gear demos. Most of the gear demos that you hear on my channel and have for the last four or five years or so have all been done through this amp. Solid state technology has come a long, long way, not denying that at all, especially the digital stuff. And many of us have recently discovered that the old cheap solid state amps that we once used to make fun of you know, i.e. the crate solid state stuff, actually sounds pretty good when you run it through a decent speaker cabinet, as opposed to the cheap speakers and cabinets that those manufacturers used to pair with those amps back in the 80s and 90s. But at the end of the day, they're just not tube amps. Why should everybody own at least one tube amp? Three reasons. They're warmer sounding, they're more organic sounding, and they're more responsive. And by more responsive, I mean, you know, the, the tubes actually will react to how hard uh, uh, or soft you are playing your guitar. If you're really strumming in, those tubes will heat up and the amp will break up a little bit more. If you're dialing it back and playing something a lot more mellow, the amp will respond accordingly. You know, and going all the way back to the 1950s, this is the main reason why most people have preferred tube amps. However, today's modern day technology tube amplifiers, you might not think that the responsiveness is, you know, quite as big of a factor, but remember there's those other two reasons. So here's a good challenge for you if you really want to see the difference. Take a good old-fashioned Fender Princeton Reverb and play through it. Now go find yourself a used Fender Princeton Chorus, which is a solid-state answer to the more expensive Princeton Reverb 2 combo. Play those two side by side. A lot of you might think that the Princeton Chorus actually sounds pretty good. I happen to be one of those people. I think it's a good sounding amp, but it ain't the Princeton Reverb. You want to try that experiment with a little bit different style amplifier? No problem. Go play through a good old-fashioned Marshall JCM 800. It's a good old-fashioned 2203-2204. Now, go find yourself a Marshall MOSFET Lead 100 solid-state amplifier. That was the solid-state amp that they came back that they came out with back in the late 1980s as a solid-state, more affordable alternative to the JCM 800. The Lead 100 MOSFET is a really good-sounding solid-state amplifier, but it ain't no JCM 800. So now that you're armed with this information, go do your own research and you will soon see yourself why everybody should own at least one tube amplifier.
Quick story about me, my first real amp was a Marshall VS100 combo amp. It had a 112 speaker in it. The distortion on that thing was absolutely disgusting. So I ordered myself a Johnson J Station, which it looks a lot like the pods, red bean pods back in there because they kind of competed against each other. I had all kind of effects in there. I had all kind of amps in there. And I ran that for the longest time from when I was 15 to when I was 22. Then when I was 22, I actually got my first two pad. It was an HNK Statesman. 50 watt head. Now it's more of a classic rock head than anything else. And I wasn't exactly happy with the distortion that was on it. So I kind of played with it a little bit, but I wasn't exactly captured and enamored with it. But fast forward a few years down the road, I ended up trading that amp, the H and K for a 5150 combo. Now the 5150 combo is exactly what I was looking for. This thing is snarly and it's so good. And it doesn't sound like Anything that's in modeling tech currently kind of makes sense because all of the things that are modeled in 5150 watts, which have been modeled to death and all kind of different things, is it's always the big 100 watt heads. The combo itself is 60 watts. It has a little bit different sound on it and the combo itself actually influenced 5152. I'm gonna take it one step further. I'm gonna say you need to own an amp that's in the actual physical world. When I was in college, I played a lot of jazz guitar and the amp that we used all the time was my teacher's Roland Jazz 120 combo amp and that thing sounded so amazing. And once again, modeling doesn't quite capture that feel that that amp has. And I think it's important that everyone has an amp in the real world they can turn physical knobs on because it's very different from when you're dialing that in in a DAW or in a software. The knobs react a lot differently. Last thing I'm gonna say, you don't have to own a big amp head. You can own uh, a little bitty lunchbox head. You can own a solid state amp. There's plenty of good solid state amps out there. You can own a solid state preamp, pair that with a tube power amp, or you can buy a preamp rack, pair that with a power tube rack, and you can do you can mix and match so you can get any type of tone that you want. So in closing, everyone should own a tube amp definitely because tubes have this magic that they, they get along with everything. And sonically, if you own a tube amp, you can pair that with your modeler. You can pair that even with your pedals. You can pair that with a pedal that even has a tube in it and you're gonna get a sound that isn't quite fully captured anywhere, even as far as modeling has advanced. According to us, uh, it's all about that first 10, 15, and 20 seconds when you plug your guitar straight to the amp with a real maybe 4x12 and that superhero kind of feeling, maybe with volume and gain raised a little bit, that no other system in the world uh, can make you feel. Without even going further down the rabbit hole about uh, digital versus analog, uh, etc., we are really found that you really need to uh, understand your past uh, in order to uh, better understanding the present and the future. So, what, what does this mean? Uh, according to us, you really need to uh, play, have played uh, multiple amplifiers, um, different amplifiers. Uh, many of them in order to understand how a uh, digital machine nowadays works in order to get the better out of them. You, can do the, you can't do the opposite ways. So uh, it's really, really important for us, uh, for a player to uh, understand the real life, the real amplifier in real life in order to get that transposed to the digital life, wherever the system is. So uh, analog, uh, real amps come first always. Bye. Hi John and hi everyone, I'm Leo. Thank you so much for having me. Should every guitarist at least own one real tube amp? Well, in my opinion, there are two different perspectives, two different point of view, a technical one and a more emotional one, sort to say. From a technical point of view, in my opinion, you don't need a real tube amp. Nowadays, you can get great tones from amp modeling pedalboards or plugins. On the other hand, still from a technical point of view, in my opinion, it is important to know how a tube amp works. For instance, a real tube amp has a preamp section and a power amp section. The tone you get Cranking the power tubes is typically different from the one you can get from the preamp tubes. Furthermore, in my experience, the later you introduce distortion in your signal chain, the more dynamic is the sound, etc. It is important to know these concepts because 
When you use an amp modeler, you know how to deal your tone, what you can get using the gain knob, what you can get using the master knob, etc. Okay, this is the technical perspective. And then there is, in my opinion, a more emotional answer. Let me make some examples. Why so many people every single year go to the Louvre Museum to see the Gioconda? From the technical point of view, the Gioconda is for sure a great picture. But what really moves people? Well, for instance, for that fascinating smile, what Leonardo wanted to tell us with that smile? Furthermore, we know that Leonardo has worked on that picture many, many years, refining it, changing it. That picture should have had a great importance for him. But why? All these questions resonate in our mind. There are some secret emotions behind that picture. There is a story. There is something emotionally and inexplicably that has a strong attraction for us human beings. Let me make another example. This is a 1987 Gibson ES-175. She is in good condition and I think I could sell her for 4 grand. But actually, I will never sell her. Even for 20 grand, even for 50 grand. Why? Because it's a present. My mother bought it. She saved some money every month for a couple of years just to see a smile in my face. What is the value of such a guitar? She has no value. And she is here with me remembering my mommy. What about that plexi? Is it just a tube bump? No. The plexi was played by Jimi Hendrix and by other countless of guitar players. This is the amp used by Eric Johnson to obtain his amazing tone. And what about this uh, Lone Star? This is the amp used by the great Andy Timmons to obtain his beautiful tone. And every single day when I enter this room, I'm inspired. Just looking at these two amps and knowing what they represent. They push me forward trying to become a better musician, following the path, so to say, of all my guitar heroes. How important is it to own a real tube amp for us guitarists? How valuable is it? Well, no value, guys, as we cannot give a value to a human emotion. Thank you, see you soon, bye bye. Hi, my name is Joe Morgan. And the question uh, that has been asked is why tubes? What makes tubes so special? Why not just use solid state or a model or a computer or whatever have you? And I think that um, for me, you know, growing up, learning to play guitar, all of my heroes played through, you know, old Marshalls, old, old boxes, old fenders. And um, that's the music that I knew and the music that I grew up with. So when I started playing guitar, um, obviously I wanted to emulate my heroes. So going in and researching the amps that they used and finding out the differences in the amps, like uh, what makes a box a box, Fender, Fender, and Marshall, and Marshall, really kind of shot me down uh, my journey into tube amps and, and then manufacturing tube amps. But I think the, like, the biggest thing, as I was thinking through this, tubes are special. No two tubes are the same. If you get 112 AX7s, uh, from the same manufacturer, from the same lot, each one of those tubes is going to be slightly different than the one next to it. And they're a, a lot like snowflakes in that regard, where they are unique, they are like live breathing things that um, we use to uh, really enhance our, our, our music. A harmonically rich, um, and I want to explain a little bit more into that. So, for the most part, tubes versus solid state. Solid state is a, um, it's a silicon wafer, and what we do is we have to apply a voltage to it once it gets to a certain point, generally seven tenths of a volt. It turns the transistor on and then the transistor's on. In a tube, what we're doing is we have um, a gas, and with the tubes of vacuum, 
We have gas sealed in it, and that's um, one of the things, if you ever heard the term heaters, we turn the tube on by heating the gas the, that is in the tube. And then as we apply voltage to it, the way the electrons dance around within that gas um, as they're activated by our guitar signal through the plate in a tube uh, is, is where we get that warm, rich tone. And that's one of the reasons because uh, the manufacturer, no two tubes are the same. That said, in a solid state amplifier, you can choose between different MOSFETs, um, different FETs, all of these things are basically gonna sound exactly the same. It's the same silicon wafer made in a lab. It's just sterile and, um, and it doesn't breathe with you like a tube does. The tube, when you dig in, it, especially when it's under a lot of stress, like high voltage, it will breathe, it will sag in with you, it'll, it'll release, it'll add compression, things that a, a, a transistor will never be able to do. The other thing is, different tubes sound different. Like the uh, KT66 that I'm holding now, versus say like an old um, 5881, these two tubes do the same thing. They amplify sound. In fact, they do this at about the same wattage rating. So, you know, both these tubes are about 22, 25 watts at max output. Um, but they're, I mean, look at them, they're radically different and they sound different. And the personality of these two different tubes are really gonna affect the way the entire amplifier sounds. And so like in a box where we have, you know, thin walled EL84s, versus maybe a, um, an old uh, Fender Bassman with 5881s or Marshall Bluesbreaker with KT66s, all those amps sound radically different. And the reason that they do is because these unique, lovely, beautiful, archaic devices um, just give a different tone. And I think as guitar players coming up now and in a more of a digital world and digital age where they get their experience between different tones in a two-dimensional format like a, a Kemper or a, um, you know, Axe FX or something like that, it's, it's when those types of players can get to the real version of what they're simulating and understand that there's a completely different feel to those amplifiers that they move and breathe along with you that you just can't ever reproduce in any kind of solid state or computer generated AI. Um, I love tubes. I love tube amps. And I'm gonna continue to uh, build these dinosaurs uh, as long as people want them. Well, I'll probably build them even if they don't want them because I like building tube amps. Obviously, tube amps, amps are expensive. Um, if you can afford one, though, you know, if you're the type of guy that plays through high-end models and stuff that are expensive anyway, then I would say, yeah, always aim to get a tube amp in your collection because it's just a different playing experience. If you've never played through one before and it's your first time, it can be a bit of a shock to the system because you have to pick a lot harder and play a lot more aggressive and use pick dynamics a lot more. I don't think the modeling world, as good as it is, and it is good, um, has quite nailed the pick dynamics side of things. Um, you know, tube amps are very glassy, very attacking, and it's that initial strike of a note that makes a tube amp different from a lot of modelers and a lot of digital stuff. The way you pick hard and the note pops out of the speaker, moves air and kind of hits you and attacks you, that is what is special about tube amps. Tube amps are a lot less forgiving though than a modeler and they are not for everyone. There are guitarists out there that are absolute wizards on guitar that use modelers because they're light pickers, you know, and they're quite light finger and they don't get on with tube amps that much because you have to pick a bit harder when using a tube amp, but tube amp, sorry, <laughs> but you get more dynamics, pick dynamics from a tube, tube amp, it's more alive. And yeah, I would say, that at least every guitarist should experience playing through one at some point, even if they can't afford to own one. But I would say if you are the type of guy that has a lot of gear and a lot of modelers, then yeah, get rid of one of those modelers and get a tube amp.
as a young budding guitar player, it didn't take long for me to realize that my small practice amps in my room were not equating to the monolithic towers that stood behind the people that I obsessed over. This larger than life tone, this transcendence, this energy that I was feeling from these people were not wizardry that they were conjuring before me, but it was simply the boxes that stood behind them. Now, once I started to take notice of things like humbuckers and neck through versus bolt-on and pedal boards and things like that, I realized that these little things were what separated the men from the boys. Now, why do I love two ramps? There's an undeniable liveliness to them that is incomparable to anything else. Besides that, every amp, every name, every component, every build has a story. As a guitar player and somebody who has dedicated his life to music, I can't think of a better way than to try to channel that art through the very devices of those that inspired us. I gotta tell you a few reasons why everyone should own at least one tube amplifier in their inventory in their life. And reason number one is just the looks of it. Man, look at it. Isn't this the most beautiful and sexiest piece of furniture you could put in any room on this planet? I thought so too. Second number two is, of course, the sonic behavior of a tube amplifier is really hard to come by or really hard to, to copy, even with the best digital device you can imagine. And there are really good ones on the market already. But in the room, the sound is still different. Even if you have a, like a Nordic P Quad Cortex or a Kemper with, a, with any kind of, what is it called? Power amp, exactly. It's still different because the guitar going into the digital device has to switch or form or change the signal from analog to digital, back from digital to analog, to the cabinet and to your ears. And you will always have slightly latency in the digital signal or on the changing progress. And that's why to know the magic of a real tube amplifier, you have to experience it for yourself in the room, standing in front of a 4x12 cabinet, for example, and just hit the strings as hard as possible. <laughs> no, as hard as you like, of course, and in the settings as you like, but the, the immediate answer or reaction from guitar to amplifier to cabinet back to you um, is, yeah, the fastest way possible, only with a analog tube amplifier. In this case, that's the best reason I can imagine. And I get over to the way smarter guys than I am. For us, there's something special inside a tube amp and it starts with the build process. So we handle with all those materials, with all those comp components, uh, with trannies, with the tubes, the woodworking process, uh, the Tolex process, and then when you switch it on for the first time, you see the tubes are glowing, uh, they heating up, and then you play the first chords through a new tube amp. That's just amazing. So if you own a tube amp, regardless from which which area, so maybe from the 60s or maybe from the 80s or maybe from, from today you will better understand what these amps should sound like. So if you have like a profiler or something or a digital stuff, um, you have so many options. But on a tube amp, uh, you don't have so much options. So you can better focus on that tone and on the connection between you, your guitar and the amp and the cap. So that's why we think a tube amp is something special. It feels special it should inspire you like a good guitar like a good instrument and we see a tube amp as a part of the instrument so as a part of the in instrument chain so that's why we think you should have at least one tube amp in your collection bye
With the rise of digital platforms in recent years, it's easy for us to dismiss the use of amplifiers because, let's face it, digital platforms definitely sound good and they have a lot of features and they're very convenient and portable. But let me just tell you a little story here. So about 13 years ago, I sold my amplifier and all my pedals and I went full digital because I was in a band that was very busy, we were playing out a lot, and I wanted to simplify my rig and not have to deal with lugging around heavy equipment. So for the next few years, I spent a lot of time dialing in that digital platform and I thought things sounded pretty good until I invited some friends over one day and I told them to bring their amplifiers and we were going to have a friendly shootout. So after listening to the comparisons in the recording that we made, I realized that I absolutely got spanked by these amplifiers. Now why did that happen? Well it happened because I got rid of my amplifier and dialed in a digital platform without a good reference point to have around. And the further I dialed that thing in, the further away I got from genuine, real, authentic amp tones. Thank God I did that comparison because it brought me back to reality and I've remedied the problem because I went out and bought an amplifier very soon after that and I bought a bunch of amps actually and I think I made up for my horrible mistake. So don't make the same mistake that I did. Don't think that amps don't matter anymore because we have all these great digital platforms around. As good as those are, they're still trying to emulate amplifiers. So if you're dialing in your tone on a digital platform, it's very important to keep that amplifier around as a reference when you're dialing in that tone because it's going to keep you grounded in reality. And besides all that, let's face it, we use digital platforms for convenience. But if you want to have sheer enjoyment, plug into a real amplifier and enjoy the thunderous sound that comes out of that cab and the amazing reactive feel that you get with the amplifier and the awesome response that you get and the real authentic tone. Speaking of which, all of this talk about amplifiers makes me want to plug into one right now and start throwing down. <laughs> I'm Chris, the owner of Jupiter Effects, and with Jupiter Effects, we also built the Titan, which is a very, very, very powerful tube amp. And I will now explain why I love tube amps so much. First of all, Tube amps are freaking cool. We as guitarists have the whole wall of amps image burned into our eyes, even with modern technology and the whole digital stuff. The best argument is still, they're unbeatable and freaking cool. That's it. I like the mojo, the vibe, the aesthetic, even the smell of dust on our tubes. For me, there's nothing more beautiful than a vintage tube amp with all its flaws I call a character. Wall shaking, ears bleeding, there's nothing more that makes me more happy than a tube amp on 10 and feedback ringing. Sound guys rolling with the eyes while you set up two full stacks. But you know, life's too short for half measures, so crank a tube amp. Crank a tube amp today. This is my love letter to tube amps. I freaking love them. All of them. My job at ML Sound Lab is all about telling you that you don't actually need tube amplifiers. And that is also true. You don't need them, but it's a good thing to understand how tube amplifiers work. There are many things that are simply impossible for any plugin to actually do. And one of the main things is actually a speaker and a speaker cabinet. And you have definitely come across 
people talking about the amp in the room phenomena really the amplifier is not the thing that's making the magic in the room it's actually the speaker be it in a combo be it in a 4x12 or whatever size cabinet that you want to use uh, when you have that guitar speaker uh, spreading the sound in your room that actually uh, is a very unique experience and if you've never experienced that i'm pretty sure the first time you hear that <laughs> phenomena you will feel like uh, it sounds strange, it sounds dark, but it's also at the same time kind of uh, filling the room in a very special way and you can hear your guitar so much better. Uh, that being said, none of the recordings that you've ever heard uh, have been amp in the room, so you don't ha really have to care about it as far as recording guitar or uh, getting a professional sound. But if you've never experienced that, it's like uh, only looking at photos and never really using your real eyes. For example, go look at a painting, go look at Mona Lisa with your real eyes versus looking at some photographs on the internet. So yes, that immersive amp in the room, which is actually cab in the room, which is actually speaker in the room experience is something that I think every guitar player should experience and actually have a lot of experience with because that is a big part of um, kind of the relationship that guitar players traditionally have with tube amplifiers. Uh, now speaking from the amplifier side of things, uh, there are actually some things that I think it's good for everyone to experience, both limitations and both kind of things that quite many modelers get wrong. And probably the most wrong thing about most amp modeling without naming any other companies uh, because of legal stuff, uh, would be the power amp modeling and that is something that really sucks at so many different levels the impedance modeling and uh, the sag of a power amp is a very unique kind of a thing and i don't think that many companies actually do a good job but if you've never experienced it if you've never kind of driven that tube amp so hard that the power amp starts to kind of compress and things like that it's a very unique feeling uh if you have not felt that, if you've never experienced that, uh, I don't think you necessarily have a good idea of what even these plugins are supposed to sound like. Um, then the limitation of tube amplifiers obviously is that they are super loud. Um, even some of the lower wattage amplifiers that I have here, um, I think I have around 30 amplifiers right now, even the low watt ones, if I had the volume around two, three, it's already so loud that most likely my neighbors will have a problem with it. For which reason, I've actually built an isolation booth uh, right here at my home studio. So I actually had to build a separate room so I can actually use these amplifiers. So that is a limitation. And many people like John, for example, uh, use load boxes at home because that's the only kind of way for you to actually get to use these amplifiers. So that is a big limitation. Another limitation is that most people don't understand how tube amplifier EQ is sort of a lot more subtle than you think. For example, pull up a Marshall, like a JCM 800 or a Plexi, the EQ really almost does nothing. And um, I know this from experience because we've made some plugins where the feedback has been like, uh, this EQ does nothing, it doesn't work. No, it's just realistic and the real app really doesn't change its sound with the knobs. And that's just how some tube amplifiers actually are. We have many generations of guitar amp modeling now. I mean, we can go back to the Line 6 pods and the first generations of Axe effects and uh, what we have now. And I don't think it's in its final stage. And whenever the next stage of amp modeling comes, what is the sound that it's trying to sound like? Real tube amplifiers. Ultimately, all amp modeling is trying to sound like real tube amplifiers. So if that is something that you are after, you may not have any idea what that sound is if you have no experience with real tube amplifiers. Now, if you are going to get a real tube amplifier now, after watching this video for your first time, um, really get a Mesa Boogie Mark IV. That's it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> 
to me the coolest thing about tube amps is that uh, no matter if they are the same model built by the same guy on the same day with the same components they all sound slightly different and you don't get that with plugins for instance you may get the same plugin that i have and everybody else the exact same one we may tweak it differently and use different irs for instance but the core thing that makes the sound it's the same algorithm essentially that's not the case with tube amps and as we all know swapping a few tubes around in your tube amp can drastically change uh, the sound and the feel of your amp no tube is the same so that really adds to the mystique for me working with amps can sometimes be a love or hate relationship hate relationship because they can get noisy they can develop problems they can blow up i've seen that happen a few times but yeah plugins can save you a bunch of time in the studio they can sound amazing and copy almost any sound imaginable but yeah tube amps are just fun to play around with the first time i cranked a 100 watt plexi through a 4x12 cab on full tilt something clicked in my head in uh, it completely changed me. So I think every guitar player should at least once try a fully cranked uh, whatever amp and see how everything changes. It's completely a different beast. And that's a really important thing to me. Every amp sounding slightly differently and every amp reacting differently to your playing. I may want uh, a chugga chugga sound and I may plug into the 2C Plus or the PV or whatever. But when I want a more bluesy sound, I may plug into a clean fender for instance and that amp will uh, completely differently react to my playing and that will essentially change how i uh, approach the guitar so yeah it's a it's a cool thing it's a love-hate relationship with tubes and the hate part uh, from my own experience comes from sometimes trying to figure out a new mod or looking to get a, a new sound uh, change a few components and see what happens hours upon hours uh, trying to figure out how to get what i hear in my head and then hear it on the next day and it sounds like garbage so back to square one and that's the frustrating part but uh, like any other important relationship in your life uh, no matter how frustrating and angry it can make you you just damn love it and we circle back to that when you get it just right everything works as it's supposed to it's a really magical moment for me tube amps uh, are really strong word to say a way of life but 50 percent of my life uh, revolves around tube amps and gear or analog gear so yeah we try to copy those things that smell good warm up the place and sometimes break down with plugins so why would we try to copy something in any imaginable way if it wasn't that good or we didn't love it so much so yeah tubes for life man it is my belief and i'm sure many others would share this with me that there's this interesting dynamic that occurs when you have the interplay of guitar pickups pedal cables pushing into a tube amp that has this really cool, interesting uh, non-linear response we all love that are interfacing with speakers that are pushing air at volume. All that works together and that relationship, um, I would call it magical because there's this quality that's produced, this amorphous, uh, intangible thing. Um, I guess you could best call it like touch or feel. I just don't feel like it necessarily makes it across the jump when you go digital. Um, at, at least for me, it doesn't because when I'm trying to craft like a sonic signature or like chase the tone in my head, uh, I tend to zero in on little things like that. You know, how do the palm mutes feel? How do the pinch harmonics feel? Uh, bends, uh, things of that nature. And I don't always get those little nuances out of digital stuff personally. Um, don't get me wrong, big fan of digital stuff. Uh, love the utility of things like the neural quad cortex and the fractal, etc. But um, I just don't quite find them inspiring in the same way. Uh, furthermore, when I have a piece of gear in front of me, like a tube amp, um, I, I enjoy, you know, dialing and playing with it and tinkering and trying to really squeeze all the sounds I can and exploring all the sonic possibilities it has to offer me, trying to really zero in on its unique characteristics or voice. Because as a designer, I know that, you know, when we try to build something or like mod something or design something, we're uh, often, you know, imparting a lot of our creative 
uh, vision and marrying it with science and engineering to create something special. And I enjoy teasing those characteristics out of the gear that I come across. I find it intrinsically inspiring and fun and interesting. It's part of the reason I do what I do. Uh, and you know, on top of that, I think when you do stuff like that, there's this concept of like less is more and you, there's a, there's a skill you develop. You, you learn how to, uh, you know, think outside the box. You learn how to craft tones and really push your gear to the limit and, and flex into roles you might not have thought of. Because, you know, if I have every amp ever at my disposal, snap my fingers, I don't necessarily need to, to learn to do that. And I feel like it's a valuable skill to have. So those are kind of my, my, my biggies, um, and yeah, that's it. Thanks. Hi, guys. It's Jose from Thermion. I design and I make pedals for a living, and I think that tube amplifiers are very special because even though I make all these things that you can see here, I make pedals, I make preamps, uh, at the end of the day, when I go for rehearsals with my band, I play just one one of these heads and one of these cabinets. These are Spitfire series tube amplifiers. They're just special, they sound special, they react in a way that can be imitated, but really at the end of the day, it's quite unique. Uh, if you really think of an amplifier that you like, I think you should purchase it. I think you should go to a shop, to a real shop. I think you should try it. You should rehearse with it, rent one if you can. And if you have the opportunity, just go for a tube amplifier. Just one in your life will make everything a little more special, a little better. It's like a friend of mine says, even if the, you know, artificial intelligence or even if tech, if technology uh, goes, advances in a, in a way that you can, for example, recreate a mountain that you can imagine that you are in the Mount Everest, do you think that will stop people, that will prevent people from going physically to the Mount Everest? I think it will never happen. So it's the same with two amplifiers. They're the OG, the original game of amplifiers. The guitars, electric guitars, were designed to, to go through a tube amplifier. And you should definitely own one. Hello, my name is Francois from Invader Amplification. Sorry, but my English is very bad. So, je vais parler en français. Donc, je vais répondre aux questions. Qu'est-ce qui rend les amplis à lampe toujours d'actualité aujourd'hui Pour moi, c'est tout simplement la qualité du son et la dynamique qu'on peut atteindre avec les tubes. Qu'y a-t-il de magique avec les amplis à tubes Tout simplement, je trouve le, le toucher, le fait de pouvoir régler euh, ses réglages avec sa main, de toucher les boutons, c'est vraiment quelque chose de très important. Et comme je dis toujours, je pense qu'un ampli, ça, ça vit en fait, tout simplement. Est-ce que la modélisation remplacera l'ampli à tube Tout simplement, je ne sais pas vous répondre, car tout dépend du musicien, de ses contraintes. Est-ce qu'il joue à la maison, en live, en studio ou dans un groupe euh, Le numérique est super déjà au top euh, est facile d'utilisation, mais encore une fois, tout dépend du musicien. Je pense que la meilleure solution, c'est de tester les deux, donc que ce soit le digital ou l'analogique, et enfin de voir ce qui correspond au mieux au musicien. Que chaque guitariste devrait posséder un ampli à lampe Je vais répondre oui, au moins un. C'est un ampli Clean Crunch, excellente plateforme à pédales. C'est d'ailleurs euh, les amplis qu'on vend le plus chez Invaders. Et euh, c'est vraiment très intéressant de marier le digital et l'analogique ensemble. John asked an interesting question today. Why should anyone own a 2024 tube amp? Well, the short answer is because tubes are f***ing cool. Tubes are badass. They are like a middle finger. Here we are, still alive and kicking after more than a century. So, if you own a tube amp, you're a badass too. A bit longer answer. While listening in the mix on a consumer device, you can't tell apart a modeler or a tube amp. But in the room, they behave quite differently, especially how they react to the player. And uh, there's a human element too. We as species, however we want to deny it, are still hunter-gatherers. We love to have stuff and more stuff. And us, we choose music as therapy. And guitar tone is what tingles the back of our brain 
you just love fiddling with these boxes in different colors and knobs and switches and yeah anyone who says uh, eh, that was enough and I never want to have a hangar full of amps ah, he's lying definitely lying I was never on the crusade against new technologies models are great great tools they are like a Swiss army knife they get many jobs done nicely but tube amps are specialized tools if you not only want to get the job done but to get it nailed just perfectly they do it I guess that's it <laughs>